In this lesson, we are going to talk about the inverse of a matrix. Let us recall the definition of a multiplicative inverse for real numbers. Given a non-zero number x, the multiplicative inverse of x is the number such that when you multiply that number with its multiplicative inverse, you get the multiplicative identity, which is equal to 1. In the world of matrices, a similar definition also exists, and it is given as follows. If A is a square matrix, a matrix B is called an inverse of A, if and only if the following conditions hold. First, AB is equal to I, and BA is also equal to I, where I here is the identity matrix. Take note that the inverse of a matrix can only exist for square matrices. Second is that, next is that, the product of a matrix with its inverse, whether you multiply the inverse from the left or from the right, we should get the identity matrix. If a matrix has an inverse, we call it invertible. If we cannot find such matrix B, we say that A is singular. Let us show that B equals this matrix is an inverse of this matrix A. This is just a matter of verifying the conditions. First, we should have that their product AB should be equal to I. Their 1, 1 entry is 0 times 1 is 1. 1, 2 entry is 0, 0. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. For the 2, 2 entry, 1, 0. And BA is that equal to the identity matrix. We have 0 times 1 is 1. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. 0 plus 0 is 0, and 1 plus 0 is 0. So indeed, their product, AB and BI, are both equal to the identity. Hence, B is really the inverse of A. Next, let us show that this matrix B has no inverse. Take note here that B has a row of zeros. And what will happen if B has a row of zeros? If you multiply B with any matrix, whatever those entries are, what would be the first row? It will have a row of zeros as well. And therefore, this cannot be equal to the identity. So there is no matrix that you can multiply to B in such a way that you will get the identity matrix. Therefore, B has no inverse. Now, it turns out that the inverse of a matrix is unique. Hence, if B and C are both inverses of a matrix A, they have to be equal. Let us prove this. If B and C are inverses of a matrix A, then that means that the product AB is equal to I, the product AC, and CA as well, would be equal to the identity. Let us start with this. AB is equal to the identity matrix. Let's multiply C on both sides of the equation. By the associativity property of matrix multiplication, I can write this as CA times B. C times I is C. But CA over here is equal to the identity matrix. 
we now get that B is equal to C. Since the inverse of a matrix is unique, we will just denote it by A inverse. Let us discuss the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix. If I have this 2 by 2 matrix here, and if we get the product AD minus BC, you can view it as this AD minus BC. If this product here is not equal to 0, then A is invertible. And its inverse is given as follows. What is this saying? You're getting 1 over this product AD minus BC. And take note that this exists because we have here that AD minus BC is not equal to 0. And then look at what happened in the entries of your matrix here. All you have to do is to switch A and D here. And then get the additive inverses of the entries here. So that's why you have negative B and negative C. This quantity, AD minus BC, is called the determinant of A and we write it as det A. From here, we can see that A is invertible if and only if the determinant of A is not equal to Zero. Let us apply what we've learned in this example. Determine whether the matrix is invertible. If so, find its inverse. Let's look at matrix A. Let us compute its determinant. The determinant of A is 6 times 2, 12 minus 5. That is equal to 7. So therefore, yes, A is invertible. And its inverse is given by get 1 over the determinant, which is 7, times interchange these two entries and get the negatives of this. So we have negative 1, negative 5. That is the inverse of A. For matrix B, the determinant of B is... 6 minus 6, which is equal to 0. So therefore, no, it is not invertible. Let us see the relationship of inverses with linear systems. Recall that a system of linear equations can be written as a single matrix equation in this form. A times x equals b, where a and b are known matrices and x is to be determined. In particular, this a over here is your coefficient matrix and your column matrix x here is your column matrix consisting of your variables x1 up to xn. What happens when this coefficient matrix here is invertible? If that is the case, A inverse exists, and we can now multiply both sides on the left by A inverse. Now take note that if you multiply it on the left, you should also multiply it on the left here. Remember that multiplication is not commutative. Hence, we get this is A inverse times A times X. And this becomes identity. That's the identity matrix. We get x is equal to A inverse B. And this is the theorem. If we have a system of n equations in n variables and the coefficient matrix A is invertible, we now know that the system has the unique solution and that solution will be equal to the inverse of the coefficient matrix times B. For example, let us solve this system. Our coefficient matrix is 5, negative 3, 7, 4. And take note that its determinant is equal to 20 minus negative 21 that is equal to 
141, its inverse is equal to 1 over its determinant, 41 times interchange 5 and 4, get the negatives of this entries. We have 3, negative 7. Therefore, using the previous theorem, what would be our variables? X here, that's the column matrix consisting of your unknowns, X1 and X2. This will be equal to A inverse B. And B is your matrix consisting of your constants. We have 1 over 41. I will just leave this 1 over 41 here. And then this is negative 16 plus 24 is 8. 28 plus 40 is 68. What is this saying? Your x1 is equal to 8 over 41 and x2 is equal to 68 over 41. Let us discuss some of the properties of inverses. Take note that the identity matrix is invertible. And what is its inverse? What is that matrix such that when you multiply it with the identity, you get the identity? That is, of course, the identity matrix. Next, if A is invertible, so it is inverse and the inverse of the inverse of a matrix is equal to itself. Let us recall from our previous discussions that cancellation loss for multiplication does not hold in the world of matrices. That is, if you have AB equals AC, it doesn't necessarily mean that B is equal to C. You cannot simply cancel A here. However, if A turns out to be an invertible matrix, the cancellation loss will hold. Why is that? Because if A is an invertible matrix, we can multiply now both sides by its inverse and we will get that B is equal to C. This will cancel out this will cancel out. And that is the identity matrix. The reason why we cannot simply cancel out the A here is because its inverse might not exist. What can we say about the inverse of a product? If two matrices A and B are invertible matrices, of course we should have the same size, then its product is invertible and its inverse is given by this. What is this saying? This is saying that the inverse of a product is equal to the product of the inverses, but the order reverse, just like with transpose. In order to show that B inverse A inverse is the inverse of AB, we have to check that when you multiply it with AB, you get the identity. Multiplication is associative, so I can group B and B inverse. This is identity. And we have A times A inverse, which is equal to the identity. So this one here is correct. I will leave it up to you to verify that if you multiply B inverse A inverse on the left of AB, you would still get the identity. Let us verify the result that we obtained earlier. Let this be your A and B. Let us verify that the inverse of AB is really equal to B inverse times A inverse. First, let us compute AB. AB is equal to 
3 plus 4, 7. 2 plus 4 is 6. 3 plus 6 is 9. And 2 plus 6 is 8. Therefore, AB inverse is equal to 1 over the determinant, which is 56 minus 54, which is 2. Switch 7 and 8. And get the negatives of these two entries. Simplifying this, we have 1 half times this matrix, we get 4, negative 3, negative 9 halves, 7 halves. What is A inverse? Let us compute. 1 over its determinant is 3 minus 2 is equal to 1. Interchange. Get the negatives. B inverse, 1 over its determinant, 6 minus 4 is 2. Interchange, get the negatives. That is 1, negative 1, negative 1. 3 halves. We write my product B inverse A inverse here. This is equal to 3 plus 1, 4. Negative 2 minus 1. Negative 3. Negative 3. Minus 3 halves is negative 9 halves. And 2 plus 3 halves is 7 halves. Hence, this B inverse A inverse is really equal to the inverse of AB. Next, let us discuss the inverse of a power. Suppose that A is invertible and N is a non-negative integer. When we raise A to itself N times and A happens to be invertible, then this power of A is also invertible. The inverse of the power is equal to the inverse of the matrix raised to that same power. And we can now define the raising of a matrix to negative exponent. A raised to a negative exponent is simply equal to the inverse of the matrix A raised to A. Take note that this means that raising a matrix to a negative exponent will only be defined if A is invertible. Next, we also have this property. If A is invertible, then this scalar multiple of A is also invertible and it's equal to K inverse times A inverse. What this is saying is that you get the multiplicative inverse of the scalar and multiply it with the inverse of your matrix. That's why we have this condition here that the scalar k has to be non-zero for k inverse to exist. One more thing is that the transpose of an invertible matrix is also invertible. And its inverse is equal to transpose of the inverse. Let us apply the theorems that we discussed. Find A if the inverse of A transpose minus 2i is given by this matrix. We are solving for the matrix A. Hence, what do we need to do? We have to remove the inverse. 
First, we will get rid of this inverse. In order to get rid of this inverse, we will lease both sides to its inverse again. The inverse of the inverse is the matrix itself. So we get a transpose minus 2i. We're just looking at the inverse of a matrix. First, we will get its determinant. 1 over its determinant is 2 times 0 minus negative 1. So that is 1. Interchange. And then get the negatives. I can just erase this. That is my A transpose minus 2i. And then I will solve for A transpose. I will multiply 2i on both sides. Plus 2i. Two i is two. That's equal to two negative one, one four, and therefore, so therefore to get a, we simply get the transpose of a transpose. A transpose transpose is equal to a. So we get two negative one. One for this is now your a. In this lesson, we were able to compute the inverse of a two by two matrix only. But what we want is to find the inverse of any matrix of any size n, and that is our topic in the next lesson.